You're listening to Spiritual Growth Tools on the radio, helping you understand the blocks you have in your life to being happy with a wide variety of guests to help you better understand the problems you're having in your own life. Whether you're depressed, poverty-stricken, suffering ill health, or confused about how to take the next step, discover products, services, and information that will enable you to grow with grace and address issues that are preventing you from happiness, health, or abundance. Go to spiritualgrowthtools.co.uk and find out what's holding you back. Hello everyone and you are listening to Spiritual Growth Tools on the radio where we discuss spiritual growth, what that means and how it can help you to move forward through the blocks that you have to health and happiness. I'm your host Caroline Nettle and I'm here with Lucinda Miller who is from naturedoc.co.uk. I'm thrilled to have her with us this evening. Um, I'm going to ask her all about the work that she does with natural health and helping children and adults to overcome issues that they have. So Lucinda, thank you for coming on. It's great to be here. Thank you Caroline for inviting me on today. You're so very welcome. Well, my first question would have to be about what drew you into the natural health industry? Um, well, when I was a child, I always wanted to be a doctor or a detective, and um, I realised quite sort of, you know, well, as I was growing up, it probably wasn't going to happen, um, and, but it always sort of held inside, and I ended up doing lots of different things, and then I, my health deteriorated quite significantly in my early 20s, and um, I, um, you know, a, a friend of mine recommended that I go and see a naturopath, and I hadn't really ever heard of a naturopath before. So it was quite a new concept to me. But I went along, and within 10 days of changing my diet, taking some herbal remedies, I felt fantastic. And all the problems sort of dissolved, um, and I started to feel fantastic. And I decided that this is really what I wanted to do. And the person I saw was an aerodologist, so she basically discovered what was going on inside through looking in my eyes and, um, and looking at the pigmentations in my eyes. And um, I thought, wow, this really is detective work, and this is being a sort of doctor. So you can see where it all came together. And um, I've been doing this for nearly 20 years now, which I, and I love every single moment, and every day I wake up with great enthusiasm, looking forward to seeing the different types of people that come my way. Um, I became very focused in on pediatric, on children's health, um, <clears throat> over the last 12, 13 years. Um, Partly because when I became a mum and wanted to give them, um, you know, natural approaches to their health, whether they had an ear infection or an upset stomach, um, but it was really when my eldest son started showing signs of attention deficit and dyspraxia that was causing a lot of problems for us, um, and for him obviously, that we decided to, uh, um, to step up things more, and I got into something called the biomedical world which is very common in America um, and is becoming more and more popular in the UK as well. And um, it um, is looking at children and saying, why is their asthma so bad? Why are their allergies so bad? Why, um, you know, have they got attention deficits? Why are they autistic? You know, why are they, suddenly their coordination has gone out of sync? You know, more and more children this is happening to. It's seen as an epidemic. Um, you know, it used to be one in 10,000 children um, were diagnosed with autism, and it's now one in 56, um, and the, the numbers change quite a lot, but basically it's increasing on year on year. So something huge is happening in our environment to, 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 to trigger all of this. The cases of asthma are getting out of control, and the number of children on medication, and quite severe life-threatening asthma as well. The allergies, you know, the number of people with peanut allergies, there was no recording of an allergy prior to 1900. And in 19, I think it was 1926, the first record, there was the first record of a, a peanut allergy. So, you know, where does this all come from? Um, you know, why has it all changed? Why has the world changed so much? And so I've become very passionate in this sphere. And I run a clinic now, and I, I look after about 500 children on the autistic spectrum now. Um, I see several hundred other people with different conditions, such as autoimmune conditions and allergies and so forth. But the big, big one is the time I see these kids with autism and neurodevelopmental issues. And what we're doing is we're trying very hard to establish what happened, what went wrong, because very frequently, in not everyone, and sometimes people would say they were pretty detached, even as a small baby, but with most, you would say there is a regression at some stage, whether it's at 18 months or whether it's at 4 or 5 or 7, there's been a change in them. And um, you know, suddenly speech has disappeared, or communication, 
your eye contact um, and other connected things that are going on, whether it's seizures and so forth. And um, we're doing these amazing tests. We're doing um, laboratory testing, which is looking at you know, testing their urine, testing their blood, testing their stool, looking to see what's gone on. And most commonly, we're seeing an immune a breakdown. So we're seeing what's happening is that the body is reacting to a huge amount of food. So it might be eggs, it might be gluten, it might be milk, it may be blueberries, it could be anything. Um, and equally, at the same time, the body's not, not fighting infection properly. Um, so that um, when you test, they have very, very high teeters for viruses, bacteria, um, yeast infections, or commonly something like Lyme's disease or something like this. You know, they have these huge infections that the body is not recognizing and not fighting properly. Um, and this is causing a low-grade inflammation. Um, and there is an amazing doctor at Harvard University called Martha Herbert. And she describes it as the gray zone, where in a blood test, the inflammatory markers wouldn't necessarily come up. But it's a low-grade inflammation, which is affecting brain function as well as the full body function physically as well. And often they find it difficult to walk. You know, often they you know, have these slightly strange ticks and so forth, and it could well be due to all of this. So what we're trying to do is to work out where it went wrong, and what we find is often there are blocks in the system due to toxicity. So um, the, it's commonly a lot of mercury in the autistic kids' system. There's also lead. Lead is very common in the kids with ADHD. Um, and then there's very frequently we see arsenic, we see aluminium, and we see very high copper levels, um, and so forth. And this is because the environment, unfortunately, due to a number of factors, is um, making us more and more toxic. And you know, sometimes it's passed down from the mother because they've, you know, worked in an environment that um, it exposes this to them. It could be through their water. I had a client just last week, and she's had a huge immune breakdown. And um, it turns out that her water had. I think it was five times too much nickel, three times too much aluminium, and her hair test has come back through the roof. She's been taking this amazing detox spray um, from a company called Touchstone um, Essentials, and um, it has helped her hugely in a few days. So her gut problem, her nails have gone from yellow to white, um, and she's been stronger already, and she's only been on it for a week. So it is possible to detox from these things. And in fact, I use a very similar realized with my son um, and he, we saw a, a raise in IQ of up to 20 points. Wow. So he went from an IQ of around 103, 104 to, and he's now around 120, 124 depending on who's testing him. So it's raised significantly. So it's an amazing thing in these toxins. So thank you very much for that, Lucinda. That was really interesting. And do you want to tell us a little bit about the symptoms your son had prior to you helping him? Yes, I mean, he. it would have been difficult to have a, a full diagnosis of something because it was, it was slightly sort of out, you know, out of sync. He seemed a very out of sync boy. Um, he was finding it incredibly difficult to write. So the big thing was he would write the then he would have to bounce on the trampoline for 10 minutes and then write cat and then write bounce on the trampoline for 10 minutes, that, etc. And that was the only way we could get him to write. Um, and um, he had extreme bowel issues, um, which it was a big constipation issue, which was very difficult to resolve. We tried lots of things prior to all of this. Um, he didn't like to be touched. If you touched, it said it hurt his skin. Um, so being hugged, he said, ow, that hurts whenever I hugged him. And within a few weeks of doing all these lovely treatments, he kept got into bed with me and gave me an enormous hug and said, it feels nice now, mommy, I can hug you. Oh. He's the best hugger now ever. He's brilliant. Um, so, it's, you know, it was sort of, yes, he was doing better at school, you know, he went from back to front 10 PPs writing to joined up writing within a week of these treatments. So we were seeing massive gains quite quickly. But we were working on the system for a good two years. It was nothing overnight because we kept on seeing lead and arsenic and things in his hair. So we had to keep on treating it because I wasn't going to allow it to, you know, cause problems in the future because 
you know, when you read up about these things, you see just how it can affect the body in so many different ways. Um, and I'm hoping we've got it all out now, uh, but I will, you know, test it from time to time just to check. Because when you grow, um, when your bones grow, it can make a release lead into the system because that's where it tends. It's very difficult to pick up lead in blood unless you've been exposed over the last two to three months. So if it's something you've been exposed to low grade a long time ago, it's not going to be in the blood, but it is in the tissue. So that's why you have to test the hair. So that's fascinating. So um, to anybody that's listening with children who have, you know, you specialise in behavioural disorders and autism, you know, definitely getting their hair tested then might might indicate what they're up against. And, um, you know, lead is the most common toxin in our environment. And unfortunately, it's also the one that the body struggles the most to get rid of. So, um, and it, as you say, it does like the bones and um, specifically the skull. So it's one of those ones that if you, if you think you have it, it's a really good idea to detox. So when parents come to you, do they often come because they've been around the medical system and they're not getting the answers that they need? Because I know that sometimes these children can be very difficult to diagnose for the medical profession. I mean, typically in the UK, because obviously that's where I live, um, the NHS, which is the National Health Service, does not believe that autism is anything more than an inherited genetic mental health issue that you cannot change at all, and all, you, all I, I'm aware that you're given, I can't say this categorically, is a little bit of extra funding to cope with maintaining them and looking after them. And they do get you know, a special letter which therefore goes for a tribunal or if they need to go to a specific school. Um, so it's seen as not, you can't help autism. However, the kids that I'm seeing, the parents come in having read on the internet, read some fantastic books about it and said, look, this is what I want to do. I want to give it a go. I want to give my child the best chance I can. But a lot of kids, they don't have a diagnosis as such. You know, they, you know, they might have seen an educational psychologist and they've been told they've got poor working memory, they've got poor processing skills. Um, and so that they, you know, whether it's auditory processing or, you know, um, they still, you know, they're struggling at school. And um, there's an amazing lady that I'm working with at the moment called Florence Garda, who um, runs a Centre for Excellence. And she is um, helping an awful lot of children with exercises and computer special programs to help their brain to function. But what we're doing is we're putting in the nutrition now. Wow, it's making a massive difference. These kids are all coming on leaps and bounds with their reading, with their writing their processing skills, their working memory, and because all the, all the, all the clutter is being cleared out of their system, and they're getting the nutrients they need, so I'm a big fan of giving the child an incredibly good diet. Now, a lot of children are very fussy. Now, fussiness can often be because they have underlying low-grade reflux, or that they have a zinc deficiency. So, what we frequently do is to run a stool test to see if there's anything residing in their gut that shouldn't be there causing the nausea or the sort of poor appetite. And we also look for signs for zinc. One of the big signs for zinc that you could probably spot as a parent if you were interested in this kind of approach is to look at their nails and to see if there are any white spots on their nails. These commonly, historically, people have thought it's lack of calcium. It's not a lack of zinc, possibly magnesium. And they correlate very closely when you do the hair testing to um, see that people will have spots on their nails and you know, low, um, chronic, low zinc, chronic, low magnesium. And you think it's very important. It's very important for growth. It's very important for taste buds. It's very important for sense of smell. It's very important. Um, zinc makes you think that it's incredibly important for, for learning. So it could be that they're lacking. They don't need a massive program, but they do need high levels of zinc in their system. And that could be through a supplement. Um, it's very difficult to do it through diet. You can do it, um, but it, it's quite tough to do. So most people do it as they can. It usually comes in liquid or chewable form, so it's not so hard to give a child, even if they can't swallow the capsules. Um, and um, so as I said, you know, there's, there's often an underlying, what I find almost all the time, the children that come and see me, you say, you know, what's their health been like? And you know, frequently they've had 
ear infection, beyond ear infection, you know, once a month, once every six weeks, once, you know, about six times a year, constantly on antibiotics for an infection that hasn't really ever gone away. Because it's still, if, it, if an infection comes back within six weeks, it hasn't properly been dealt with. Um, and it, you know, it's very interesting to hear how frequently it comes, because often it's the same one. And maybe it's a virus, not rather a bacteria, and that's why the antibiotics haven't worked. Um, so we often have hearing problems, we have vomit, we've had adenoids and tonsil problems, we've had sore throats, we've had you know, asthma and so forth as well. Um, or they've had more of a gastric issue, so constant diarrhea, bad constipation, um, gastric pain, reflux that's continued beyond a few months, um, spitting up of milk when they're breast even when they're breastfed. You know, all these sort of gut issues occur, or just very, very poor appetite, very fussy, maybe just eating two or three foods. And, you know, if a child, there's an amazing book, and it's called Children with Starving Brain, and that is what these children are all about. They might be eating a relatively good diet, they might be eating a very, have a very, very select diet, but essentially what's happening is those nutrients are not getting to the brain. It may be because their gut is inflamed, it may be because... Um, they're not getting enough nutrients. Um, it may be that they have an imbalance that they need to sort out where you know, they don't do very well on specific things and that's pushing them out of sync. But with all of these I'm finding you get the right nutrients, you detox and you you know, these kids bloom and you know, they're they're the ones getting the cups for the best progress child of the year and you know, they're moving on and they're sort of losing their sort of issues. And, you know, I, I always see these you know, people say, oh gosh, my child's having problems now. Now imagine when they're a teenager or a young adult with the self-confidence and self-esteem issues that they might have. Um, if they just have never been able to succeed. And I believe that every child has the right to succeed at school and to enjoy school and to come out with a good education. And if a poor memory or, or poor processing has hindered that, then, um, you know, it's it's going to impact on how they how they are in life and, and you know there's enough emotional and mental health problems now in adults and they correlate very closely with kids that have had historic attention problems, concentration problems, dyslexia, dyspraxia, etc. Absolutely, and I was just thinking to myself about the adults that um you could also help because we do see exactly, I was going to say exactly that, we do see a lot of adults who struggle with self-esteem issues and um, I, I see a lot of the patients that come in to see me, they're losing their hair, for example, as it's a very typical one with lead and, um, you know, concentration issues, inability to sleep, you know, very poor you know, the, the label of IBS is just a conglomeration of lots of different gut disorders and, you know, they are so common. It's almost as if they're the norm and, and good health is not the norm. And so, yes, I wonder, you know, do you also treat adults? I do. I also treat adults. I see a significant number of adults too. Um, so this morning, you know, I've seen a lady with severe reflux. I've seen a lady with significant mental health issues. And, you know, they're both blossoming already, you know, it's great, you know, and it makes such a big difference. Um, I fundamentally believe that you can put, if you put the right things in your body, that your body needs, so you need to identify that first, um, and take away the baddies, you will be, you know, a million percent better. Now, some people are chronically ill, and you can't expect to get well overnight. So the broad part of it goes that I say that you should... Um, probably allow a month for each year you've been unwell. If you've been unwell for 20 years, you need 20 months of healing. If you've been unwell for a couple of months, you, you know, you know, over a year, then you probably only need a month or so of healing. So that's where the difference is, and it, it usually works that way. Wow, that's incredible. And what do you think good health gives to somebody? It gives you confidence. It gives you freedom. I see life, life should be without limits. And, um, you know, if you do a small thing each day to help you get health, keep healthy, then you have an unlimited life. You know, I'm very lucky. I've got three young children. I work pretty much full time, but they never miss out on seeing me. You know, um, I, they have one day a week where, but they're in 
they have one day a week where they might miss out on me, but basically that about it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to have the energy to work in the evenings, to work first thing in the morning, whatever I need to do to give them a brilliant, you know, brilliant confidence in life. And I love that fact that I can do it. Now, when I was in my early 20s, I needed four sleeps a day. Wow. And so I'm now in my mid-40s, and I am, you know, I'm up to six, and I go to bed at midnight, and I'm flying every day. And I love it. I love the fact that I can manage my stress, I can be a happy mum, you know, I have happy children with no allergies, no hang-ups, no nothing. They can go to some house and they can eat pizza and then they can be at my house and have lovely carrot juice. And I don't mind, you know, it's, it's, their, it's their life, you know, and they're doing really well. No, oh, I'm really pleased for you. And uh, yes, I have met you, Lucinda, and you are full of beans. So I, I think you're a walking testament to being healthy, definitely. And uh, so, yeah, I was just going to talk about, you know, this radio show is called Spiritual Growth Tools on the Radio. And, um, you know, one of the things I'm always saying to my clients is it's incredibly difficult to know or to be spiritual when you've got a body that's in pain or, or you know, is exhausting you. So... You know, spiritually, I think good health is a real is, is something to really strive for. And you know, I'm always horrified when I look around at what people are putting into their shopping baskets. And it's like, if you had a, a wonderful Jaguar car, I'm British, um, and you filled it with cheap petrol, you know, would it work as efficiently as it could? And it's the same with the body, isn't it? You need to, you need to fuel your body with with healthy, organic, if possible, you know, fruits and vegetables. So. Yeah, well, what's your take on spirituality? Um, I think that when you are feeling well, when you're feeling calm, then you are able to be spiritual throughout your day. Um, the great thing is when you feel well, you have time. You have so much more time to be spiritual. If you want to, you know, a lot of people, they need so much sleep. And then they're squeezing in work. They have to work to earn money to pay for their lives. And, you know, it's really hard. But if they're able to wake up half an hour early in the morning feeling bright and being able to sit down and do some yoga for 20 minutes, that's fantastic. It's going to set up their day. Um, and you do. You feel so much better in yourself mentally, physically, spiritually when you are well. And you have to do all three, I believe. So, Lucinda, do you want to talk a little bit about the Touchstone products and how you use them in your clinic? Yes, I've been using, well, I've been using Zeolite um, for a very long time in my clinic, but only Touchstone over the last, I guess, 18 months, it must be now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I fund, I, you know, I, I'm lucky because I do lots of testing. I can see, I have evidence to show that someone needs these supplements. And um, so, as I said, with the hair, you're seeing high lead, high mercury, high antimony, aluminium, etc. And then with the urine test, we've seen blocks in the mitochondria due to um, toxic metals and so forth. Um, and what's great is we retest, and you know maybe it's six months or a year down the line, and we're seeing you know clear mitochondria. We're seeing you know heavy metals going levels going down. Um, and there's also a porphyrin test that you can do, which is showing sort of almost like much deeper metals. And I have one client, very interesting story. Um, they all went for their annual flu shot, uh, flu vaccine, and um, overnight, the son became autistic, the mother developed rheumatoid arthritis, the baby got a full body rash, and the daughter was um, wetting herself all the time, she couldn't hold in her urine. So it was a really dramatic effect on the family. Um, and interestingly enough, the grandmother was a dentist, and there was a bit of schizophrenia in the family too. So when we tested them, their mercury levels were through the roof. Wow. I've never ever seen such bad levels. Of course, it could be passed on you know, from mother to, to child as well. So it would have been there pretty deep as well as sort of being exposed. Because unfortunately, there's still some aerosol in the, in the flu shot. And um, so, you know, it was both sort of you know, acute as well as chronic. And the father was um, very keen that we did everything really naturally, and there was a much more hardcore protocol we could have used. And they said, and he said, absolutely put his foot down and said, there's no way, but he wouldn't allow zeolite. Anyway, um, we started them on the zeolite, and we started them on a, another supplement because there were lots of infections, viral infections in the system. We started them on something called KIV 500, which is known as first line in the US. And this helps clear the infections, which made a massive difference. But then we got them on the zeolite, and um, I got the most excited 
an email about six months later saying that the son was back to normal, you know, the, the children were 100%, and the mum's rheumatoid arthritis had completely gone, and she had this um, habit of picking hair out of her hair when she was stressed, and that can be related to toxins, and that had cleared too. So we had some, a very happy bunny family of five, five, well, four out of the five, completely reversed. And anyway, they tested, we did this porphyrin test again for the mercury, and it was 100% clear, there was none in the system at all. That's um, amazing. Yeah, it was really, really exciting. And, you know, it was sort of almost proof that this was, you know, what was working because we had the before and after test. Um, and more, and so many people are doing well. As I said, this lady last week, you know, her nails were bright yellow. She was having terrible diarrhea, and she was feeling really lethargic, low, and depressed, and all of that cleared up. And that was just within a few days of taking this pure body extra strength. So it's fantastic. Um, there are some other supplements they do, which are great. They do super green food. Um, they do an anti-inflammatory formula. They do various different ones, which are all very, very helpful too. But um, you know, for me, the key one is the zeolite for sure. Well, that's been really interesting, and thank you so much for sharing all of that, Lucinda. And um, can you tell people how they can get in touch with you should they want to work with you or ask you any questions? Yes, um, it's basically the best way to get in touch with me is to call my receptionist, which is plus four four. 203-397-1824 or you can email me direct which is Lucinda Miller that's L-U-C-I-N-D-A M-I-L-L-E-R at naturedoc that's nature d-o-c dot co dot u-k um, and I look forward to hearing from you I can do um, Skype consultations as well as in hand consultations so if you are aboard it is possible <laughs> Yes, and I would highly recommend that you do get in touch with Lucinda if you've got any questions about your child's behaviour or any family health problems that you think that she can help with. And there will be a link underneath this show for um, anybody who's interested in finding out more about Touchstone Essentials. So um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing that with us, Lucinda. I do know that um, there's a lady who I do body talk on, and I... Um, I was telling her that you were coming on the show and she works in a school where they have, uh, it's basically children with behavioural disorders, so I was, I was explaining to her that maybe this would be interesting for her to listen. So please do share this show if anybody um, you know works in that field or, or perhaps has a child with those symptoms. I think um, what Lucinda does is just phenomenal and I know that the results that she has are equally phenomenal so I'm very happy to have had you on today because I just think it's really important when there are things that you can do to help your children and your family get well um, I think it's really important to share that message so thank you so much Lucinda I really appreciate you coming on thank you very much Caroline it's been a delight okay thank you very much I'm really looking forward to the next show, which is on July the 22nd, next Tuesday at 7 p.m. BST, with Nuke Sanchez from the Take Me to the Truth and Doing the Ego not-for-profit organization. They aim to help people to recognize and undo the one cause of all suffering, which is the ego, which is another way of saying our fears. By providing resources, education, and mentoring, they're intended to empower individuals with the means to trust in their divine teacher within. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I've had the privilege of being on a course with Nuke Sanchez here in Somerset in England. It was a wonderful course, and she's a great teacher, so I'm very much looking forward to chatting with her. Thank you for listening to, to us on Spiritual Growth Tools on the radio. I really love doing this show, so thank you for listening in. If you subscribe to the channel, you will be kept informed about the upcoming shows that you will not want to miss. Stay safe, and I hope you find the tools you need to grow with grace this week. I will speak to you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Spiritual Growth Tools live on the radio. For more information, go to spiritualgrowthtools.co.uk.